This is a blueberry matcha latte with oat milk. So this is something that I've been working on kind of behind the scenes. November, December, January, February. Probably about four and a half, five months. I've just, you know, I'll work on them for like a half day here, a few hours there, or whatever. Because it is kind of been my like new therapeutic thing that like I can go do. I can zone out. I can just tuft away. So just a couple seconds of backstory. Back in the middle of the pandemic, I saw rug tufting and I remembered years ago seeing moss rugs. And I was like, oh my gosh, those are so cool. They would fit so perfect with the felt flowers that I make. I don't know, they kind of expand this like felt and fiber art garden world that I've been working on. So that was why I knew when I saw that people were starting to do tufting at home, this, you know, DIY version, I knew I had to try. I got my rug tufting machine back in 2020, mid-2020, I guess. It could have even been 2019, I can't remember. But I never even opened it until, I would say, last year. But there's a lot of stuff that you have to do to be able to actually do the tufting. And so it took me a while to get the right setup. I'm someone who likes to, like, have as much of the stuff you need as possible before you start, before I start something, because I want to be able to just dive right in and be able to kind of get into that flow state and not worry about having to like leave the house or go to the store and grab this or whatever, because that just, it takes me out of it. And I will also say that this is not meant to be a tutorial whatsoever. I just wanted to share what I've been working on and really kind of share my initial thoughts with this as, um, as a new kind of craft form. I was about to say genre. So to start off, I needed a rug tufting frame. These are pretty simple and like straightforward. It's literally just a rectangle or square frame with carpet strip tacks, carpet tack strips mounted around the edges. And this is what's gonna hold onto the fabric. That way when you use your rug tufting machine, there's, there's good tension. This is a lot like sewing, and whenever I've been telling friends and family about this that haven't seen or heard of rug tufting, I've described the rug tufting machine as a handheld sewing machine that cuts the thread in between every single stitch. Ultimately, you're making that carpet or rug textile on the opposite side. So anyways, I started off making my frame from reused materials, uh, reused 2x4s, left over from displays that I had when I had my brick and mortar studio like five or six years ago. That is a whole other story time for another day. Definitely a huge learning process, but I had a lot of these materials left over that I knew I would reuse someday. You can buy kits to make rug tufting frames, but usually the kits that I've seen online are a lot smaller than what I ended up building. And I knew eventually I would want to work up to a larger frame. So I thought, I've got the wood, I've got the space, I might as well go ahead and just build a bigger frame.
Now, I did end up building this frame basically three times. I built it the first time and I realized that I needed my like leg and like foot system of the sides of this to just be made a little bit differently. Originally, I had the two inch sides of the two by fours um, butted up against each other and that didn't give me the stability that I wanted. So I moved that bottom part to be the four inch side up against the two inch side of the leg if we're making body analogies. <laughs> oh my gosh, that reminds me of the, the character from Doctor Who. Moisturize me. Then the ironic thing is, is even after I took apart this whole thing in order to change the feet, which one thing that I will say if you make one of these, I added these kind of like angled brackets at the bottom. That was a huge help, definitely do that. And I ended up reusing all of these pieces too. The ironic thing is, is that the final form of my rogue tufting frame didn't have legs at all. I hung it from the ceiling in my garage on hinges. That way, whenever I'm not using it or I would just wanna like get it out of the way, I can just swing it up above where the garage door rises. It's been really nice because this rug tufting frame is big. I've seen people online make these and like after they make a couple rugs, they just end up taking their frame apart because it's taking up that much of their floor plan. <laughs> when it was time to actually start the tufting process there's a lot of these little moving parts that it takes some trial and error to get to where you can you can work through this process a little bit smoothly so the different parts that you have to worry about are your fabric your yarn your rug tufting machine and your tension I would say your tension is kind of a little bit of a beast of its own thing so when I first started I think the drop cloth would have worked fine it was definitely a cheaper alternative something that I already had laying around the house but my tension and my yarn was off. It's just like a sewing machine in that you kind of want to have your thread kind of stretched out so that way your tension stays where you want it to be. I am by no means somebody who does sewing a lot. And I, like I said, this isn't meant to be a tutorial. I'm just kind of sharing, you know, what I've been doing to um, make this an enjoyable experience for myself. A lot of people will mount a little arm at the top of their rug tufting frame with some kind of a hook onto it so that way you can feed your yarn over the hook and then feed that into your rug tufting machine. I didn't want to have another little moving part on my frame since I already have it hanging from the ceiling. So I decided to just use an S hook and hang it off of the garage door track because it's right there and it just works out perfect for me. I will say that I think my next little improvement for this whole thing is to have two separate hooks a little bit further away from each other because I also learned that when you use a regular, at least for my tufting machine and the yarn that I'm using and everything, I realized that using two threads or two pieces of yarn fed through the machine, it just, it like grabbed better. I don't know how to describe it. When I fed them over the S hook, they got wrapped around. You can see in this clip that they kind of get wrapped around as you're using it. And that's fine for a while until one of your yarn threads, I'm going to just call them threads. I don't know what else to call them would like get caught or it wouldn't get cut all the way and then it would just back up this whole system. The other thing about the yarn and also tension that kind of goes hand in hand is when I first, when I tried the very first time, I just kind of threw the yarn on the floor. I tried to use the machine. The yarn kept pulling out and I did a little bit of research and I found out that again, I think it feeds into the tension bit. Most people have been rewinding their yarn in order to get it um, easier to unwind as you're tufting. I did buy one of these yarn winders and this was great because like I said I'm trying to feed two pieces of yarn through the rogue tufting machine 
instead of having to buy two skeins of yarn up front, using the, the yarn winder, I'm basically cutting those skeins in half so I can use both of those halves at the same time, if that makes sense. Some of these colors I didn't end up using a lot of, so that was really nice to be able to split that skein in half, use both halves at the same time, and I didn't have to buy multiple skeins or use multiple ones um, if I didn't have to. And then the final element of all of the different materials that you need, well, for this part, is the fabric. There is actual, I can't remember what the fabric's called, but there is actual fabric that is recommended for this. It's a little bit more expensive. Actually, it's a lot bit more expensive. But I want to say that it ranges in the mid-20s and it can reach up to like $30 a yard, if I'm remembering correctly. Originally, I tried using drop cloth as my fabric and I think that would have worked fine. However, I have been using monk's cloth and you can kind of see the little leftover bits here. You can see the light shining through it. You want something with a little bit of space in between the threads because, I mean, you're about to fill those those spaces with all of this yarn. I have gotten super lucky because about 30 minutes away there is a fabric warehouse. I think it's kind of a combination overstock place and then they also, it's like an online retailer and once a month they have this these like discounted weekends and you can buy from the warehouse. That's become my source for Monk's Cloth um, in person and I'm only paying like three or four dollars a yard and it works great. I will say the downside about the Monk's Cloth, the only downside that I've found so far, you kind of have to push the machine up against your canvas if that's what we want to call it. After you work on it for a while it does kind of stretch a little bit so I do have to go back every so often and like stretch the fabric over to tighten it a little bit more. I feel like that's completely worth it in order to save that much on um, the fabric. using the kind of reddish pink monk's cloth. This was actually the second time that I tried using the rug tufting machine. The very first time I built my frame, I put the drop cloth up and I tried to use the machine with a little bit of green thread. I literally did like two lines and they it, I, it tufted fine, but the thread kept coming out and I was like, you know what, the research I've done, I know I need to get one of those yarn winders. So I literally put it away and I didn't work on it again for a couple weeks. Then I came back and that's when I started this and in, that, in the meantime, I found the red monk's cloth. <laughs> Where's my wire? Really? Are you kidding me? Over here you can see how kind of like ratty this is. And then literally as I go section by section, you can see that this is starting to get way cleaner. Um, ideally, the whole underside would look like this. I did realize that if I didn't tuft thick enough, I could see that red in between a lot of these threads. So I was super glad to have found uh, the green monk's cloth at that same place. 
And it is a little finicky. Because I bought my machine so long ago, I actually can't find the little kit of tools that came with it. But I do have enough random tools around the house that I ended up just making it work. And again, like I said, it takes some trial and error to get into the flow of this and to kind of, I don't know, I guess start setting that, that muscle memory that you need to just work smoothly through this process. <music> Finally, I got everything all lined up exactly like I needed to. I got the tension and the yarn situated. I also got the right kind of fabric in the right color so I didn't have to worry about having the base color show through anywhere. And I got the rug tufting frame mounted to the ceiling. And it's in the garage so it's not taking up any space in, in the house anywhere. It's in the studio. The only thing I will say about mounting this to the ceiling is you gotta, you gotta imagine, so while you're using it, there's nothing behind it. So I did place a couple chairs behind the frame with some like heavy things on it. So that way, whenever I would push into the fabric, it wouldn't like swing all crazy. <music> step while your project is still up on the frame is to glue the back. I've only tried out two different types of glues. The second one that I used was way less stinky. Both times when I glued these I did open up the window, I opened up the second garage door, and I had fans going to really circulate that air out of the way. I wasn't wearing a mask but I need to get one. I really need to invest in like a good respirator for stuff like this. <music> Most of the glues that are on the market that I've seen, just cake them on and then you let it sit for 24 hours. Some of them are a little bit different with how they cure. The first brand that I used, it stayed tacky even after the 24 hours. And even to this day, it's a little stack, stacky, tacky. So whenever you get to the next part, which is to cut little tabs into the fabric around the edges and then glue those down. If you use the kind of glue that is still tacky, you can just press them into that glue and it stays fine. This glue that I'm using now doesn't do that. And again, it's another one of those payoffs that I would prefer to just glue the edges down with hot glue than to deal with this extra stinky glue. You glue those little tabs down and that really finishes off the bottom. <laughs>
The final, final step for the bottom would be to cover this in some kind of a fabric. There are fabrics that you can get with the little rubber dots so that way it's non-slip. Some people just um, finish the bottom of these with felt. Um, and it, I guess it really depends on what you're using your tufted project for. If it's something that you're going to hang on the wall as an art piece, you know, I think felt or just any kind of fabric would be fine. Same thing for if you're doing something like this. I did this really long, thin one. I've still got to finish it as far as like doing the edges, the bottom, and sculpting it. But this is a really long and narrow one because this is going to be a table runner. So these I would be fine with using some kind of a felt or something like that. But if you're going to use it for the floor, I'm going to try to find some kind of a actual like non-slip fabric for that. Again, I think I'm super lucky because I'm so close to this fabric warehouse. I remember seeing some non-slip fabric there, but that takes care of the bottom. The final, final step, and this is the step that I like to leave for last because it's the most satisfying, is sculpting the top of your project. And I've just been using a pair of um, hair cutting trimmers. These are not that expensive. I got this set, I think from Walmart for like 25 or $30. I can't remember exactly. And it works okay. I think I need to get a set that is actually for rug tufting, something that's meant to cut, you know, these larger yarn pieces. Mine kept getting jammed up. But for this project, you know, it's very organic. It doesn't have to be precise or anything. I just went around the edges of all the shapes, made them look a little bit more rounded. I actually don't have any finished pieces here at the house right now. I made a lot of these already and I let our friend use them for her gender reveal. They're still at her house, I'm gonna get them from her later. Um, you can see them as a centerpiece on that table. The final thing I'll say about these is I made them almost as like a modular system. I love a modular system. Something that you can move around and change the layout of and build on. But then I also made some that are just one little circle or two of these put together. That way I can stack them on top of each other and have some sections of moss that is just like really thick. I want to play around with making sections of this that have longer threads, but I think I'm going to have to do that by hand. I don't think that I can find a rug tufting machine that will tuft much longer threads. I think I'm going to have to do some kind of latch hook situation. That's everything so far. I mean, you're caught up to where I am, like what I've been working on. I've only been playing around with the moss rugs. I haven't made any other designs yet. I did pick up felt to do, felt, I, mean? I did pick up yarn to do something for Valentine's Day, but I don't think I'm gonna have time for that this year. I really wanna do something else other than the moss. And I have the frame, I have the machine. It's just a matter of getting more fabric and more yarn. What do you think I should make? I, I love this because the potential is endless like you can literally make whatever kind of rug you wanted to and when at the end you have this like actual big physical thing that you can put somewhere i think that's so cool sitting with me and listening to me talk about this this is kind of another little rabbit hole that I've gone down an obsession that I've had because I feel like this it's this kind of expands this like fiber art garden world that I've been building and I think it's so perfect I have been working on little rugs and table runners and stuff and I'm excited to see where this goes so thank you so much for watching again and do all the YouTube things like this video if you like how it turned out and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos I actually have another one that I'm editing right now I've, I've got a lot of projects that I have been working on or I've done over the last few months and I recorded the process while I was doing it, but I'd never had time to actually edit the video together and put it up. So that's what I'm trying to do now is work through my backlog of projects and stuff. So yeah. And follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. I'm at makewithblake there too. I'm posting little snippets of all of my videos and kind of re-editing them and just playing around with it for now. I guess that's it. I'm going to finish my matcha latte, have some breakfast, and um, get back to it. Love you. Bye.
some of these. That's my vacuum. Good boy. We named our vacuum Vacula, and I probably will mention it every single video because I feel like it's changed my life. Thank <laughs> you.